My name is Cynthia De La Rosa. I'm a hair and makeup designer for theater, television, and film. And I'm Suzanne Scotcher, and I'm also a hair and makeup designer for predominantly theater. I trained as a hairdresser first, and then I did my makeup and special effects makeup course, and then I was really extremely lucky that within three weeks of graduating, I got a job at Man Two Swords, where I used to do the wax works. I did a, a work abroad program called BUNAC, and I was applying all over the West End. I went to the English National Opera, and I knocked on the door, and I actually pretended to know the head of department. And I just went to stage door and said, hi, can you put a call out for Janet Cooper? And they did it. And I was like, right, OK, I've got 30 seconds to make this woman want to hire me. And for some weird reason, you know, the stars aligned. And within three or four days, they had someone quit. And she offered me a job on, on, a, on a show. What I really love about working with stage is that there's an actual process where there's slightly more time. So in film and television, we normally don't have as long as a, of a prep. Whereas in theater, when you meet the actors in rehearsal, you get to listen to their first take of their script, you get an idea and flavor for how they're portraying things, and then you have the entire rehearsal process to kind of build the characters, build their stories, and then, you know, see it kind of materialize in and on the stage. You get to go on the journey together. So you all meet at the starting point, don't know each other, and then through the production period, you get to know your actors, you get a feeling for what's going to happen, and suddenly you know, oh, we just had this idea in the rehearsal room, can we, I don't know, you know, I will need more moustaches, something like that. And yeah. you go, okay, yeah, great, okay, let's do some moustaches. Yeah. I think you have to be yeah. passionate about makeup and learning, because you yeah. never stop learning, no. ever. There's a caregiving side to our job as yeah, well. Yeah, there is, massive. You can't, you've got to care. There is a real sense of like nurturing, making sure that people are okay to get on stage. You're touching them, they can feel very vulnerable. So you have to be, um, you can't just think like, oh, I wanna rub elbows with someone famous. There is an aspect of our job that is very much a caring part of the industry that we do. In the when there's fittings happening and you've got a very different language with costumes and with hair and makeup, um, they have to complement one another. And, and it's all about the storytelling. And so if someone's playing a character who's sick, it is our job for, to communicate that in a way that the audience will automatically be able to see that. In the same way that a costume designer might be able to show the audience um, what period the production takes place in, the person's socioeconomic background. In this case with Jitney, we were working with an all black cast. So, you know, it's Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in the 1970s. Um, so I started doing research after that. I kind of get an idea for the period and then I start to look at images, look through books to try to see what people looked like during that period and start to collate different images based on the period itself. And then I, I always like to do character notes because especially in Jitney, we've got three different generations of men in the story. We've got men whose youth was in the 40s and 50s. We've got men that have were, you know, in Vietnam and the Korean War. And then we have younger characters that are kind of like stabilized in the 1970s. In this case, because of the quick nature that we're working with, we rented a lot of the wigs. So Susan and I have very good relationships with wig makers because we were wig makers as well. So I work with Alex Rouse, who is a wig maker, and Carol Hancock. Um, who does a lot of stuff for theater, and we would reach out to them, and then they would, based on the research that we've given, which you can see back here, they would send us their stock, and then we would kind of start to put it on people's heads, see what was fitting. And equally, if you look around, you can see that some of the wigs have more gray in them. They might be a lighter tone to an afro or a different color to the afro hair, and that has to do with like looking at someone's complexion, um, if they already have hair on their face that we're kind of matching things to, um, trying to make sure that the wigs kind of match with the head, the hair on their faces and, and the complexion of the actor. <laughs>